Using the student height data set or the student survey again, what you can do is test formally for normality. So SPSS has two different tests. Well, one is called Margaroff Smirnoff, the other one is Shapiro Wilkes. It also calculates something called the QQ plot. So Margaroff Smirnoff and Shapiro Wilkes actually look at the QQ plots uh, in order to determine whether there's a difference or not. A QQ plot is a quantile quantile plot. So what you're doing is comparing the first 10% of your actual data in your data set to a theoretical, hypothetical, normally distributed set of data with the same mean and standard deviation as your experimental uh, data set, your experimental sample, and seeing if the two things are the same or different. So if your data is normally distributed, if you create this theoretic, hypothetical, normal distribution, then the first 5% of the data will come to the exactly the same position as the first 5% of your data in the real data set. And so you'll get a perfect match. So the QQ plot should be a perfect diagonal straight line if your data is normally distributed. So to do these analysis, I'm going to analyze descriptive statistics and explore. I'm going to look at the height data and you go to plots and you click on do the normality plots. So I'm going to switch off the histogram and I'll switch off the box plots to do none. So I'm just going to focus on the normality plots because otherwise you'll get an awful lot of plots that makes it a bit confusing. And press continue and I just want to do plots. Now if I look at my output, I get this. What's the height in meters? That's 666 uh, people that are valid, 97.7%. There are 16 missing values which is 16 percent so here is the qq plot now if it was perfectly normally distributed you wouldn't get any variation off at the bottom here or at the top it would just go in a perfect diagonal so this has a bit of an s-shaped curve now this happens fairly often and uh, just because large and small values there tend to be a few outliers uh, so these values are worth going to look at because it's quite possible that people are wrong about their heights. Uh, this is the detrended one. So this is the difference between this line and what actually happens. If you see a lot of the time around the middle, there's very little deviation from that QQ plot, but there's big deviations at the very tall people and the very short people. Now above that, there's a table with the test of normality. So here is the Kolmogorov-Smirnov, and here is the Shapiro-Wilk. Now if these values are below 0.05, then there is a significant deviation from normality, which here you can see because of these very sharp uh, tails, this very strong S shape in the curve. If these things are above 0.05, then there is no difference between your data collected and a normally distributed set of data. Now, when looking at the histogram for this set of data, I can go and do, uh, well, let's just draw it as a graph. So if I do histogram, a regular histogram, so height in meters, histogram, I think it's okay. So the histogram is showing normal distribution apart from these horrible tail messes which look like they're unreliable uh, data points. So here you have to make decision whether you're going to treat this species as outliers and exclude those set from your data set because the histogram really strongly suggests that it is normally distributed even though Kolmogorov Smirnoff and even the QQ plot are saying you've got problems because of these particular values. Well, you're talking about seven lot of tall heights and five or six shorter heights that are completely changing your distribution. So now you have to make a decision as to what you're going to do with that set of data. Do you think it's genuinely not normally distributed or do you think something a little bit strange is happening? So somebody 2.5 meters tall, that's a very tall person. It's also worth looking in this particular data because not everything was in included. So if you go back to variable view, what are the missing values? 
So there's missing values in height. So anything that has a height of one. There's a lot of miss. Uh, they've been defined as one is the discrete missing value. So some heights have been changed to that. This has happened because people have put values in in the survey which are difficult to interpret. So they've given numbers which can't be numerically changed into something. That's not perhaps an ideal missing value because one is something that could potentially exist. You could have somebody's one meter tall if you had children in your data set. It's always best to have a missing value that is well outside the possibilities of your data.